There's a, in the beginning, in the, f in, the, in the little movie, we saw that there are about 37 million people living with HIV today. And not even half of those people know that they ha have HIV, which is already a problem in itself. Um, the good news is that in many, many countries, there's more and more people on, on treatment, on medication, which is called ART coverage. So that's really good that more people, especially in the un underserved areas in the resource limited, set uh, resource limited settings, that people get access to medication. The bad consequence is of that is as people are on medication and when they fail taking their medication, they, they skip a day or they skip a weekend or there is a drug stock outage and they have walked for a day to the pharmacy, to the dispensary and it's not there. In that case, people involunta involuntarily don't, cannot take their medication and that's now the point where HIV drug resistance uh, looms around the corner because if you're not compliant with your medication, with your treatment, you kind of open up the gates for the virus that is known and notorious to mutate and, and, and replicate frequently. Uh, you open up the gates to, become, to, to produce a mutant, mutant that is uh, resistant to the medication uh, that you're currently taking. So it's our, in our biggest interest if you want to have impact on people's lives, which is what we do at Global Public Health within Johnson & Johnson, to make sure that people kind of stay under treatment and that we know where these hotspots are so that we can understand what factors drive this non-compliance, drive the emergence uh, of that drug resistance and that we basically can uh, take proactive, preventive educational me measures. As a, as a pharma company and many companies, if you look at a particular problem, it's sometimes really hard to think out of the box. You, you look at it from an epidemiological angle and that's what you do. That's what you do for a living. Now, it is well known that other factors are driving basically uh, the, dis the, the spread of disease as we just saw. It's people moving rather than the mosquito moving. Just as it is the case with HIV and HIV resistance. It's risky sexual behavior uh, that drives. It's the amount of uh, money that the governments put in into the uh, the treatment of people. So there's a lot of driving factors beyond the epidemiological factors that we typically look at that one would like to understand to be able to take some measures. When I first met Philippe back in uh, 2016, beginning of 2016, he talked to me uh, about the Data Innovation Hub. I just joined Global Public Health being a computer scientist now, making the move to the other side. Uh, and, and all of this coming together in the conversation with Philippe and oh, let's do a hackathon. I went back to, to the office and I said, well, we're going to do a hackathon. A what? Yeah, a hackathon. What's that? Well, I had to explain it in, uh, in a sense where, okay, you feed some challenges, you lock people up, you feed them on chips and cola, and then you see what gets out of it after a couple of days. Annalise showed us that the result is actually quite good. Uh, a, it was fun. We had actually better food than chips and cola. Thank you, Philippe, uh, during your organization. But what did we get in return? We, get ac we got access to a, a broad and diverse set of talent. Bright, young, new people, some of them uh, less young, but under the hood, still young of mind. Uh, but and, and different perspectives. It was said, an architect, why are you here? Oh, because I think it's important, I want to contribute. I want to also stress the fact that we position this as a data for good initiative. Basically, it's kind of bringing data together, it is bringing that talent together, it's bringing organizations together to work on this topic. And it's kind of shareable, it's open, and, and so it's, a, it's, it's really, you, you feel proud that you participated, you have done something for good. So, we got 
access to bright young talent. We got access to new organizations. We got to know via this hackathon that a company specializing in mosquito movement was literally, literally two villages away from Janssen. They didn't know we worked on dengue. We didn't know they worked on mosquito dynamics. As Annalise explained, we are about to sign a contract with them, with another party that we discovered through the hackathon, and with yet another party. And they're going to take this project that we aim to do in 36 hours. They're now going to embark on a six, 18 months exercise to do this. Without the hackathon, we would not have known they had existed, and we would not be on this, in, on this project. We got to learn new software companies. We got to learn telecom companies who also work on the problem. We didn't even realize before that telecom companies would be working on the same kind of challenges in global public health as we do. So that, I think, is, is part of the innovation, part of the out-of-the-box thinking. Uh, that, that we want to achieve th through this hackathon and in this case trying to see and find out what factors are of influence for HIV resistance and how we can contribute as a whole but also as Janssen in particular to solve the problem. In the very beginning uh, when we spoke about this Wim you said well it's kind of an easy job you have to bring me a colored map of the world, right? Working in your team as a computer scientist, I have already learned a lot about uh, diseases, HIV, TB, dengue, and so you have influenced me a lot on that. You spoke in the beginning that this kind of exercise is a real challenge. So somewhere I have been able to influence you a little bit that it is, that is going from an easy job just providing a colored map to quite a challenge. So with that, I would like to say the challenge is on. Let's meet the 26th, 27th or 27th, 28th, 29th of September to really tackle this problem. Thank you very much.